and so excellent strides research. So even though there's not a lot of money coming out of DCEO, and even though the wheel dollars have shrunk, um, our dollars have grown exponentially because we've got large foundations uh, that are putting in dollars from Ford to open societies because we have the U.S. government. Size. They're not studying. They're studying six places in the country, right? And they're putting their money into six places in the country. Well, guess what? Because we did this kind of work, one of those six places mm -hmm. is our community. And one of those six places is a place where the mom that walks in the door gets our service, right? So we can attract resources, right, when we do our best work. You know, mm -hmm. and I think that's the secondary message. We've got to change these systems and we've got to attract resources and we can, right? And guess what the private sector does, man? Of course, they're all over it, right? Yeah. They're all over it, A, because we've proven that when the nurse is there, they do the extra things that matter, you know? You know, like Susana did with my family. She comes and visits my kids, right? And not everybody does that. But you know what? Latinos, we do that. That's what Latinos do, right? That's the difference that we are to the community. So I tell her story all the time, you know, to employers too. Say, how would you like to have a nurse that does this for you? And they say, oh, man, really? And, they say, and you don't tell people to do those kinds of things. It's not in the job description, right? It's in the heart. It's in the spirit. It's That's in the soul. It's. So we've got a lot of greatness to give. And I just want to keep us talking to the external world about that greatness that we have and that appreciative leadership and the, the difference we make to those environments. Wow. That's Mr. Juan Salgado. Eloquent, touching. And, and Susana, it's, it's, we don't mean to embarrass her. It's just amazing. As a former DCFS worker in, in child abuse and neglect and have worked, done work with her and and, and just in my own work back in the day, um, it talks about what you give, what you bring to the table versus uh, just the minimal standards of the procedures at DCFS. You, the human being, adds to what you do with those families. I appreciate your comments. I challenge and continue to challenge the Latino Family Commission, which I am the author of that legislation, and that is uh, funded and uh, continues to serve as a conduit to make sure that Bruce Rauner, the new governor, and the new administration have a conduit to be able to, you, the Latino Family Commission, was empowered to do. And that is to lay out the agenda as to children and as to families. We base that legislation as to my days, as, as my work, and within the African American Caucus Family Foundation, which is a very proven method to get things done through state government. The Latino Family Commission, our sister and brother relationships with that caucus. As socioeconomics bring us together in our health care, in our families, based on our realities in our community. Wang, you hit it right out of the park. With that said and done, and we know that we need the data-based collection system in order to have a concentrated warehouse, if you will, centralization of this information. Uh, with no further ado, we can segue right into that nurse who helped take care of those three beautiful babies. And that is an RN, uh, someone who has led my health, uh, my health committee and Senator Miguel Del Valle when he was there. As I'm a 17-year incumbent, the health fair went to 20 years, and this is the chairperson of the 2nd Legislative District Health. Although I am cheating because that's I'm throwing her title in there from my district and the responsible person for serving over 55,000 Northwest Siders over that 20 years uh, with our name on it to provide free health care. And that's now uh, Susana Gonzalez and also RN Susana Gonzalez. And please indicate your title uh, officially and please proceed with 10 minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, thank you, my colleagues um, at this table that I'm very humbled um, to be a part of. I want to read you two things. One, the mission of the Chicago Bilingual Nurse Consortium, and then one, the mission of the Illinois Hispanic Nurses Association. And then I want to um, segue to my colleague who will talk about a nursing institute vision and a dream um, of where we can house and work together for pathways and learning and teamwork um, 
uh, together. As the senator said, uh, I am a, a registered nurse, and I am a pathway registered nurse. I have taken um, the licensed practical nurse route. I have taken my five years to finish a two-year degree at a community college because of the barriers and the restrictions and what life does for us um, and, and, and the pathways that sometimes exist for, for our Latinos. And then it took me another five years to complete a BSN. But today I'll tell you I have two BSNs, I have two masters, and I want to mentor the next generation of Hispanic nurses and others that want any path in health career. So our mission of the Chicago Bilingual Nurse Consortium is to increase the number of internationally educated nurses, and we know that's another secret gem. For practice as bilingual, bicultural nurses in metropolitan Chicago and its surrounding communities, which we embrace and encompass our state. Through advocacy, education, and supportive services, and no one does it more culturally relevant than the CBNC. Now, as the president of the Illinois Hispanic Nurses, which is a chapter of non of the national, our mission is to, uh, we're a professional and we're volunteers, just like many of us are in this life, a uh, nonprofit healthcare organization. And our focus is again to enrich the lives of Hispanic nurses. We want to promote higher learning advancement in the profession, cultural awareness, and active participation in our, in our Hispanic community. And part of this leadership is committed to mentor our next generation of Hispanic nurses and participate, as the Senator always said, sitting at the table and being part of the decision-making structure. And we keep hearing of pathways, and we hear of bridges, and we hear of linkages, and we need those avenues because without that higher learning, that table at the top is not representative of the community that it wants to serve. So we got to figure that out as well as we keep doing workforce development for the people that need to get there. One thing I want to say yesterday, I listened to the president, and I love this. We are and always will be a nation of immigrants. We are strange. We were all strangers once. So I was uh, born and raised here in Chicago, but I came from a mom and dad from Puerto Rico who migrated here because they wanted opportunities for their children to have higher learning and better opportunities of health and wellness. And, and so that's sort of like the American dream or the vision of all people. So, you know, I, I really valued that yesterday. So one, Elba talks some facts, and, and I love Elba, so I like many of the facts she said. I want to give you a couple facts because they go back to what Juan and I were talking about nursing, because that is my passion. When you find that passion of life and what you want to do and how you want to do it, this is what we need to, to do in this life to make it a better place. So mine is nursing. Hispanic nurses. There's like a little bit over 3 million nurses in the, in the nation. Only about 110,000 of those nurses are Hispanic or identify in some form of Latino, bilingual, bicultural, Spanish-speaking um, uh, form. That's, you know, we, we hear 16%, 17%, quien cuenta a veces, you know, you know, <laughs> plus or minus 53 million, yeah. dos o tres mm -hmm. más. <laughs> um, it depends on who was coming to my house and we say who lived there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Nena, la mariga que vive en tres. Nena, puede decir que somos siete. <laughs> so, you know, <clears throat> we have been there, I'm sure we've heard it. But, <laughs> So nationwide, I think where I was going to is that we're still 3.6% of this healthcare population that can be educated at a high level of learning. And, and that's really what we wanted to advocate. And I think one of the things that you'll hear us pitch, Andrew, uh, uh, Dr. Sund, and myself is, you know, the idea of a nursing institute, the idea of a place where we can house some of the expert uh, bridging, some of the expert collaboration, some of the expert higher learning. As Juan was saying, sometimes our higher learning institutions fall short for us. They have the funds, they have the money, and they don't have us. They have small amounts of us. But the rest of us are still struggling through pathways. We're taking 
the licensed practical nurse route, which is wonderful, and there's lots of careers in, in the LPN, in the SNF industry, in the extended care, in the home care. When I see Marta, there's all these wonderful avenues. We can build those structures, but there still has to be some RNs with higher learning, helping coordinate and delegate and make sure those programs are safe and that what we're doing is quality that Elba said. Quality health care is what we all deserve and what we all want. And the Affordable Care Act today gives us that opportunity to make sure our people find homes in health care for prevention, homes in health care for maintenance. But of course, I'm biased. I want them to be led by registered nurses. I want nurses in technology. I want nurses in electronic medical records. We want all kind of professions that are bilingual and by culture to all be at those those tables. But for me, one of the things that's important is that nurses, today the future of nursing, the Institute of Medicine's report tells you that BSN needs to be a minimum criteria for the profession, for the professional registered nurse. We are all mandating that. We're all the consumers. I want someone to take care of me that knows what they're doing, that does it with the soundest of critical thinking and does it in the safest way. But you can't do it, and I want them to be culturally sensitive because I'm gonna tell you, even though I speak English, I like when someone I see speaks my language. Aunque me diga dos o tres palabritas, si no digo el español bien, te lo digo en inglés, or I'll describe what I'm trying to say. But we can communicate, and that makes us very culturally bond, and I think sometimes that's what, when Juan says, I visit my patients, not because he's Hispanic, I visit it because it's the right thing to do. Did we meet your needs? Have we safely taken care of you, your wife, your baby that we brought into this world? Wherever I work, whether it is at a McNeil or whether it is at, a, at an Erie or whether it was at the Infant Welfare Society, which the senator embraced the fact that we know each other for como 20 años. Um, I was 12 when I started. <laughs> uh, you know, we age well también. <laughs> so anyway, I don't want to like further she ado. <laughs> she can speak for herself. <laughs> No. We're all really. I was born on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. He has the best parties. But we were, you know, we all can give you good literature. We all can give good data. I'm looking at the audience, and I know with a passion who you are because you're making pathways yourselves, and you've left imprints of health and imprints of great service out in our communities. So, you know, we we need to inspire two or three more so we can get that word out. But. The Sullivan Commission um, gave a report that said missing persons, minorities in the health profession, and this is not an old report, but we've heard it, and even if it's a decade ago or two or just last month, it emphasizes the need for leadership commitment and accountability at the highest level in institutions of learning professional organization and government agencies agencies to ensure participation and an increase of the underrepresented minority groups in the various health professions. We've touched many of the health professions, pathways, carreras in salud, not that I want to plug in that December 18, we have a career fair at carreras at Instituto de Progreso Latino, but it's important because those kids, those students, those adults, they need to meet with us and see, si, si se puede. You know, si se puede, we, we can do this. Even if it took me five years to finish a two-year degree, si se puede. Now, as we mentor the next generation, and I say that con esta niña, Evelyn, can you just stand? Evelyn is like, tu, Evelyn. Evelyn, Evelyn, she's a, a young, an as, a, a aspiring Latina nurse, I mean MSN. Hola, she, Evelyn. you know, she's a member of the <laughs> Illinois Hispanic Nurses. But this is what, this is the sprinkle of what we see. So, you know, she's working on her graduate projects. We're going to do some things together. But it shouldn't take Evelyn 20 years to finish school. Because right. Evelyn's going to do it in her four or her five. She'll get her master's and she'll be able to help more. So that's kind of, I guess, where I was going on. Yeah.
So I think I want to just segue to my colleague that mm -hmm. will support the uh, mm -hmm. a little bit more of the policy decision um, of why we want to work together and, and we should continue our collaborative 